Alright guys, I pulled the Bionicosaurus. You comfortable? Alright. Yes guys, we are finally back with the Paleo Reviews, and I know it's been a really long time since we've last done one of these, but I do want to make it happen a lot more, um, and especially with all these new figures running around and stuff, I really do want to share my thoughts and get them out there for you guys, and a lot of you guys have been begging me to bring back Paleo Reviews. This one was a vote. I had had you guys vote for a certain figure, which one you guys wanted me to review next, and the Carnegie... Uh, 2008 uh, Spinosaurus won by a long shot. Now, I hope you guys don't really mind this new setup here. Um, this is just uh, to make it a little bit more casual, made it a little bit more easy on me. Um, it, the, the other one was a little bit hard to maintain. And also, I just am a little bit more of a unique look. Um, so I'm just going to be doing this from now on just so that we can uh, hopefully get these uh, reviews out a little bit more. Now, before we get into the review for this guy, let's learn some paleo facts about Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus whose name means spine lizard, was a genus of large piscivorous theropod from the Spinosauridae family that lived during the mid-Cretaceous period about 112 to 93.5 million years ago in what is now northern Africa. Spinosaurus is one of the largest predators to have ever walked the earth, possibly the largest, with current estimates putting it at anywhere from 50 plus feet in length and 13.2 to 23 tons in weight. It lived in an environment that was dominated by carnivores, and the competition for the limited food supply was intense. And we even have evidence suggesting that Spinosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus would have fought. However, Spinosaurus dealt with this problem by preying on aquatic life, and it thrived. By studying the oxygen isotopes in Spinosaurus teeth, we know it sported a semi-aquatic lifestyle, somewhat similar to a modern-day crocodile. Pressure sensors lining its jaw would help it locate its submerged and abundantly large prey. The use of Spinosaurus's sail is still up for debate, but it was most likely used for display, heat regulation, fat storage, and or possibly to help rudder itself while swimming. Now with the paleo facts out of the way, let's get into the review for this amazing animal. First up, the pose. Now the pose for this guy is, it, it's its actually not too bad, especially for Carnegie stuff. Um, now it is still a tripod, which is definitely a big negative point uh, that it does have to be on the tripod, which, which is a typical Carnegie thing to do. However, with that said, it isn't the worst that I've ever seen on a Carnegie figure. It doesn't look too negatively stiff. Um, it's definitely a little bit stiff. And I actually have gotten this figure to stand on its own two feet, so it can be a bipod. Uh, however, its tail is clearly supposed to be um, uh, supporting it with the third point. I do like the other parts of the pose as well though, like how the arms are positioned. They're kind of like swayed off to the side in a way, but they're also splayed out like he's ready for battle. He's got his jaw open and his head tilted off to the side, but this is also a very neutral pose. And I really love neutral poses, um, or somewhat neutral poses, because then it, it gives them a lot of versatility and they can be used for a lot of things. And especially when you're a toy company like this, you want a lot of versatility because they're gonna be used for a wide variety of things for people making YouTube videos such as myself, um, people just collecting them, um, and also people making series and stuff, um, and also just kids playing with them. There, it's just a lot of versatility and a more neutral pose. Um, however, there is still a lot you can do and make it look more alive and do with a neutral pose. Like this Fari Gignotosaurus from 2017, uh, Paleo Review number 2, you can go into the playlist below and you can watch that video or you can click on the card up in the top right corner right now to watch that review. That one does an amazing job at that pose. However, this one doesn't do the, the worst job I've ever seen it, um, but I still do want to mention one thing that I have um, heard. A good friend of mine named Caesar, um, aka Godzilla Fan 40, he has this figure as well, but even though it is a tripod, it will not stand up for him. And this has happened for other people too. That is something I do want to mention that a lot of people do have these guys uh, tipping over and you can kind of see it's a little wobbly. Mine never really falls over, but it's definitely wobbly because mine is kind of one of those that can actually stand on its own two feet occasionally. But nonetheless, uh, this pose is okay. Um, it's definitely uh, slightly above average for 
uh, Carnegie, and that's why I'm going to give this one a 3.5 out of 5 for its pose. Up next is Detail. Now the detail on this guy is actually really good, and especially for an uh, older figure such as this one and for the Carnegie line, it has done a fantastic job with what it um, has here. As you can see, it's got these larger scoots here that run along its side, which really gives it this um, like aquatic feel, almost like a crocodilian. But in between them, it's got all these really tiny minute scales there, um, and th those look really great. There's a lot of wrinkles in the areas that they, there should be. There's not, uh, it's not overly wrinkly, which is really nice. Right here, the detail looks really good. Um, with the little bumps and stuff right there, but they're they're also very smooth. They're not very crisp So it makes it have this very naturalistic look um, However with that said it is a bit inconsistent and you can see in some areas They do kind of fall flat and they do kind of disappear uh, It's a little unfortunate and on the face especially it does kind of fall apart um, in the scalation and detail part there um, a lot of the teeth aren't really individually sculpted But they definitely look like they could almost be um, and overall it just looks really good the, the musculature is pretty well defined, but it's not overly ripped like uh, Papo figures and they even have some really good detail for the sail It has some really nice detail going for it, uh, which I really like I really like the subtleness of the detail But it is very inconsistent and it definitely isn't any of the best that Safari has done um, So I just figure it's kind of like more of an average um, up for the detail uh, for this guy. I'm gonna give this guy a 3 out of 5 for detail. Moving on to paint job. Now yet again this figure has a pretty decent paint job. Um, I really do love the colors they chose here. Um, they are pretty um, subtle. They're not they're 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 relatively bright, but they're they're kind of hazed and naturalistic. So it's it while being a little bit brighter in coloration, it's not too flashy, um, and it's a little bit more conservative, which I do like. Um, I do wish that they did a little bit more with the sail. That would have been pretty nice. But uh, what they did with it, I'm not going to complain about. Um, and I really do like the colors that they chose. I, I do have to say that. Um, I do like that the application here that it doesn't really look too much like it's been painted on here uh, with this main part of the body here. The sail here do look a little bit um, a little bit more concerning they have like the breath strokes and stuff and uh, it's not necessarily as well applied and the, the claws definitely bug me a lot because they did two different colors of the claws they did this gray and then this black and it just looks really cartoony um, the two different transitions there so that's definitely one of the bigger gripes with the paint job here but with the teeth the teeth are done very well with very minimal bleeding this is very uh, very good for especially how old this figure is however yet again with all these reviews I'm holding it up to the modern uh, like the current day standards anything I'm not giving it any benefits for AG I'm just mentioning that uh, verbally. The crest is painted, although the bottom of the crest is a little bit missing there. They don't really paint the entire thing. They paint the inside of the nostril pretty well. The eye is painted very well. You don't really have any of that goofiness going on. Well, you get a little bit, actually. Um, not, 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 not the worst, though. Um, and then the, the mouth is very well painted. Uh, so overall, it's just got a very decent paint job. Um, nothing to really write home about. Uh, nothing to really complain about too much besides the claws. They're a little bit annoying, but it's it's good, but it's a little blah. It's not really that exciting, and so with that, I'm just going to give this one a 3 out of 5 for its paint job. And finally, paleontological accuracy. Now, this is the category that's going to be very difficult um, to do. Um, I'm going to try to keep this uh, short and brisk. But basically, what the stance I'm going to take on this is that we know so, so little about Spinosaurus, and the papers and stuff are so indecisive, and none of the evidence we have in any real direction is too favorable. Um, we don't really have any solid evidence giving us a really clear view of this, and so until that happens, um, I'm going to uh, take a more object like. Uh, just a more conservative stance. I'm going to look for things that are more objectively flaws that are just with a lot of different animals and that we know for a fact Spinosaurus had. Other features such as the dip in the sail um, is, is a little bit more questionable, um, like uh, whether or not it was a actual a pure half circle like this or if it had a little dip. I'm not going to mention that at all. I'm not going to hold that against it. Um, and I'm also not going to hold really the leg length against it because we don't really know for sure. Um, I am going to hold uh, the uh, stance, um, I guess, because it should be uh, bipedal. We do know that Spinosaurus is bipedal. That is one thing that is very confident. Uh, we are very confident about, and it only makes sense. So I will hold that against it. It's very positive. I'm not going to really mention that too much. Um, but the, the fact that it is tripodal does hold it down a little bit in that stance uh, or in that that area However, the the with that um, for the time. This is a fantastically accurate figure uh, There are a couple things that are wrong with it the, the skull shape in general 
is a little bit too long. Um, it shouldn't be so long, it should be a little bit more bulky, especially the lower jaw should be a, a much more bulky towards the back. Um, it should be a little bit more stubby um, and a little bit more bulky, but um, the, also the, the number of teeth, there are, are too many teeth if I remember correctly. Um, there are too many teeth on this figure, there should be less of them. The sail here is also a bit shrink wrapped. Um, as you can see, if I turn it into the light correctly, um, it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see that it's a really obvious in person and you can definitely feel the bumps if you look at um, how my finger bumps around on it. Uh, it is definitely shrink wrapped on the sail there. Um, it's got all these bumps and ridges and it definitely shouldn't be like that. It should be a little bit more bulky um, and have some more flesh to it. Very unnecessary. But uh, overall, surprisingly, this figure is very free of shrink wrapping, which is very surprising, uh, especially for Carnegie and uh, just for this time period in general. They do a very good job with um, lacking in shrink wrapping. You do see a little bit right there of the finestre, but that is really, really good for the, the shrink wrapping, I do have to say. You could argue it lacks the cloaca, but I'm going to just kind of give it a a soft pass on this because you do kind of see a line there it's just not really in, in like emphasized um, with paint it also lacks feet pads which is something it should be definitely having uh, it, it doesn't really have much of them they should definitely be a lot more fleshy and more patty on the bottom uh, we do also have some evidence suggesting that spinosaurids uh, possibly had a larger dew claw that came down to act as a fourth toe but i am not too uh educated on that i'm not too familiar with it so i don't really know exactly uh, whether or not this is just one type of Spinosaurid or if it was a Chimera type situation or whatnot. So I'm going to leave that a little soft pass and leave that up to you guys. I'm going to kind of leave that out of my review, but um, if you know any better or if that uh, matters at all to you, then you can hold that in your own right. I'm just going to bring it up and you can do the research for yourself. Uh, also, the last point I just wanted to make was that I kind of wish that they had emphasized, I know that they may have not been emphasized on the animal too much, but kind of like an alligator or crocodile, kind of wish that they had uh, emphasized the pressure sensors on the jaw here, all of the little holes and divots uh, around here. I wish that they just made like little black dots or something like on an alligator's snout or a crocodile's snout and had made it more obvious that there are pressure sensors on this animal's head. Um, other than that, that is basically everything I have to cover in the paleontological accuracy department. And because it does a really good job overall, um, for especially for the time it was uh, made, it doesn't have much shrink wrapping issues and stuff, and it just has some more general issues. Um, and also my stance on just kind of like softly ignoring a lot of the uh, scientific debate with Spinosaurus. I'll just say I'm going to give this one a 3 out of 5 uh, for its paleontological accuracy. In my opinion, at this point in time, um, there's some very basic things you should get right about Spinosaurus, which I think I went over pretty well um, in this video. Also, the tail should probably be a little bit shorter, just to mention it. Nonetheless, um, I think that the main thing should be that it should just hit the general points of accuracy for most animals, most uh, Spinosaurids, and the general things we do know for a fact about Spinosaurus and just make it look cool, make it look work, and it, that, that's why I really love this figure. It looks cool, it just is by far the best Spinosaurus out there on the market in my opinion. Um, unfortunately, it is retired, so it's a lot harder to find. I'm really glad I had uh, I have this guy and I got him when I did. With that, I'm just going to quickly mention that bonus points. There are none for this guy. I'm not giving him for bonus points. He doesn't have a base or anything that really adds to the figure, so there's no bo bonus points for this guy. So let's move into some size comparisons for this guy. Now, this guy's general dimensions are 13 inches long, 6 inches high, and 3 and a half inches wide. Okay, so first up are two control size comparisons. First is the Collecta 2011 Taurosaurus. Here they are side by side. Next up is the Safari Limited 2015 Utyrannus. Here they are side by side. And here are both of our size comparisons next to the Spinosaurus. Now let's move into some more unique size comparisons. First up is the Safari Carnegie 1992 Spinosaurus. Now this is a very outdated figure, but I felt like it might be just worth mentioning. There's also the uh, gray and red repaint of this guy so that th they are the same exact size they're the same model but this uh, would scale up the exact same to that there they are side by side next up is the safari 2016 carcharodontosaurus there they are side by side and these two animals would have actually lived alongside each other in real life here's the safari limited 1998 tyrannosaurus the 10th anniversary edition there they are side by side. And finally, the Safari Limited 2006 Dunkleosteus. There they are side by side. I just felt like it'd be appropriate to put a large prehistoric fish 
of some sort, uh, which would have been uh, similar to an aquatic animal that uh, Spinosaurus may have fed on at that time. If I had the coelacanth or something, I'd show that to you guys, but I don't. So here's the Safari 2006 Dunkleosteus. Now with all that out of the way, it's time to give our final total rating for this Carnegie 2008 Spinosaurus, and I'm going to give this figure a 12.5 out of 20. Um, but this, that's not all. This figure is also going to get my seal of approval, and I know three for three, all three of these reviews so far have gotten the seal of approval from me, but I had initially decided I wasn't going to give this guy the seal of approval, but I decided um, during the review that I this guy really needs to get it, because this is a fantastic, fantastic piece and a really, really amazing Spinosaurus model, and it, it not only sizes up really well to all the other figures, but it just, it looks amazing, and it just, it, it really is a masterpiece of the Carnegie collection. And I really do think you guys need to, to get this, so in order to urge that, I really do want to push the seal of approval on this guy. Trust me, guys, I am going to be um, being a little bit more harsh on the seal of approval, but these first few reviews have been really extraordinary figures that I have been reviewing, and this one certainly, certainly deserves the seal of approval. So now, with that said, I do want to know what you guys think of this figure right here. Now, if you guys have any requests for any figures to be reviewed, then please let me know in the comment section down below. In the next review, we are going to be reviewing the Safari LTD 2016 Carcharodontosaurus. You guys, these are coming back, and now that it's a lot more casual and I can just sit down and do this a lot easier, I will be trying to do them as much as possible so tell me guys how much do you guys want these paleo reviews back uh give me any feedback on anything that should change about the paleo reviews and tell me what you guys think about this figure right here so without further ado thank you guys so much for watching and i will catch you guys in the next one Boop -boop -boop.